He will make it and you have it in your computer. That is making things smaller coming from above. Now the other part is making things larger, taking individual atoms, taking individual molecules and make larger things with it. There's one example, you see the IBM logo. They see are the dots. These are 32 individual atoms that formed the IBM logo. That was in the 90s. It was again a fantastic breakthrough in technology. And finally, now, 10, 15 years later, seems to pay off. Okay, Fulker, now let me interrupt and uh, compensate a bit for the sound issues. What you're saying is that the fabrication technology works both ways. We can shrink things or you can make things from single atoms. For example, they're looking at the slide and they can see on the right hand lower the IBM, the I, B, and M. You're saying, if I hear you correctly, that each of the dots in the I and the B and the M that they can see is a single atom. And they, right. been, they have been literally placed in in a geometric pattern, which is an I and a B and an M, is that correct? That's perfect. That's a perfect description of it. And this kind of technology we use nowadays, for example, to make the little pointers, the laser pointers, the little instruments are made with this technology. Or if you take modern uh, reading and artifacts by the computer, Similar technology. I think this, this making things is extremely small, manipulating things at an extremely small scale has really changed our lives, has changed our technology. Then, coming from low, going up, that's nanotechnology. Coming from above and going to smaller scale, that's usually micro technology. But they certainly need a very small scale that indicates also. Now, let me show you two examples for nanotechnology. A very old one and a very new one. And this is on the next picture. Okay, we have it. You have it. On the left hand page, uh, side, you see a, a stained glass window in the church. And you see the beautiful color. Now, what would you expect the red color is? It is hundreds of years old. The red color is not a red a paint or something like that. It is gold. Now, why is it red? We all know how gold looks like. Yellow. Now, if you make very, very small gold particles, they turn into red. And this beautiful red color is nothing else but small gold particles in glass. And the artists and the builders of these churches and these churches, they knew how they know it in hundreds, in many hundreds of years. They certainly didn't know that they knew another technology. That's what we know today when we analyze those churches. But this is not all nanoparticles. Maybe it is beautiful color. And on the right hand side, actually, you see now a little well, guy, and again it is made of individual atoms. Somebody has pushed on the surface atom by atom over the surface to make this thing. It's actually from IBM. It is, well, it's not good for anything, but a beautiful demonstration of what you can do nowadays. Now, if you, if, you, if you talk to engineers, an engineer will simply ask you how long does it take to make them. And quite honestly, like 10 years ago when this was made, it took somebody maybe 50, 30 hours to make absolutely useless connections. But now come the engineers and they say, let's make thousands of these little improvements that do better to us. Let them package on one chip. That's what IBM is doing. It doesn't need to check in large areas instead of one very 
small group of people. What I mean, in the future, we are expecting that people, that the company separately such things then for certainly for serious applications by moving many, 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 many items simultaneously around with many, many little shovels in the wastewater. Poker, a question was asked. Do you know what the atoms are that have been these manipulated are to make the uh, the uh, the uh, diagram? Uh, the, I think these are the, those in the IBM uh, logo were xenon atoms, red Z gas atoms. Xenon atoms. Xenon, yeah. And I think these are also maybe I don't know uh, xenon or maybe also iron. I'm not quite sure. Okay, I heard uh, a an announcement on the, the uh, on CNN the other day, two or three days ago, said that that uh, Stephen Jobs and the Apple people were announcing the uh, the new iPod, and the new iPod was going to be built around a new IBM chip. Let me just say chip. They actually showed it, which would allow them to store in a device smaller than is currently used in the uh, current generation iPod, it would allow them to store 285,000 full-length movies or one half a million uh, songs. Uh, is the fabrication technology that is being used by IBM in that new advanced device related to what you're talking about? It might well be. I, I, did, I did read the article, but IBM is working on such a device that if you wish many, many needles, tiny needles, these tiny needles you move over a black needle. And whenever you want to store a information, one needle gets a little bit warm and makes a little bend to the plastic. Now, if you want to read it out, you move the needle over the plastic, and the uh, needle will bend a little bit when it's moving through that bend. And if you want to remove the information, you simply heat up the plastic at this point, and the bend or the little bump still can't read it out. That's something IBM works on, I know, and they base it precisely on this moving individual atoms back and forth. That's the technology they developed. By the way, the uh, uh, 